Alright, so hello and welcome back to Brave New World Blindfolded. Uh, in this little mini-sode portion of the episode, I, uh, I guess I'm just gonna tune into my inner fatty or something, because I'm just gonna be sitting on the airship and talking about builds, I guess, for a while. Alright, so, uh, Terra. I'm not gonna go with any weird experimental Vigor Terra builds or anything, I'm just gonna run with the standard straight magic sort of thing. For Locke, I don't know, I guess I'll go with uh, Nikar's uh, Phoenix build. I still think it'll be past its prime when I use it, and especially since I don't level like he does. And I, I mostly just run through everything, fighting everything, so... He's not gonna get too much out of Phoenix, so I, I don't think it'll pay off for me at least, but... Who knows, maybe it'll prove me wrong. Cyan. Well, normally I might go with a stamina build in this situation. <laughs> uh, the problem is, that whole build is hinges on the dragon. Like, dragon level 5 Bushido. Bushido, whatever. <laughs> uh, and... The problem with that is that I'm still not sure if I can execute the level 5 Bushido reliably. Uh, so, I, I don't think that's a very good candidate for this, so I'm just going to go with the bigger Cyan. It's less likely to end up being great, because I have to time the level, like, what, 7 Bushido for it to re reach its max potential, but it's probably not as likely to end up sucking horribly. One thing uh, I've noticed is that I really tend to prefer the offensive builds because uh, I find that armor generally does a better job of protecting in this game than the stats do because you can get so close so close to that uh, 255 barrier uh, that if you stack yourself properly things will do very little damage and I don't know how heavily I'll need to use that in this run but I find stamina and HP generally, in general, doesn't do as good a job, but here maybe I, it will end up being really important because uh, one thing is that it's often kind of difficult to heal, and if my characters are healing themselves for me through region, I don't need to worry about that. And the second thing is that often my strategies I've noticed seem to be involving a lot of Zerg rushing stuff and. <laughs> attack first, ask questions about whether my characters are dead later, so uh, the HP is useful in that regard too. Um, the, normally I prefer the offensive stats because uh, you can only go so far with the weapons and then you need more stats to do more damage, so that's uh, one thing I've noticed. Shadow, he'll be uh, Vigor and stamina. Uh, normally, I'm I actually kind of okay with speed because uh, with the menu trick, if I use it, then uh, it generally tends to come all in handy. At least in Brave New World. In vanilla, it's still pretty useless, but in Brave New World, speed is uh, worth something. I feel, but not in a blindfolded run because I can't do the menu trick worth anything. So it's not going to help me a whole lot. For Edgar, uh, Magic Edgar is pretty great. He has uh, a lot of options. You can have something for pretty much every scenario, which is exactly why I won't be using him, because he's too complete complicated. I no need to I, make things complicated with a Magic Edgar when I can just jump or chainsaw a whole bunch. I think that would be a lot better for my case. Because when things are more complicated, it's more likely I'll make, start making mistakes. So I'm planning ahead for my own mistakes, I guess. <laughs> Instead of preventing myself from messing up, I'm just making a strategy where I can't mess up, I guess. Seven. Uh, I'm gonna go with Stamina Seven because I found Vigor last time when I tried Vigor Seven, he was really hard to keep standing, and I honestly found him the hardest character to keep alive thanks to his horrible armor. So, yeah, not gonna 
go near that this time around when I can't have characters dying because it's hard. The hard, like, as I've seen so far, pretty much like the hardest thing to do is I uh, figure out when characters are dead and revive them. Dead and Luma's spoons weren't too bad because I knew the that one of my characters was dead at that point and I just had to figure it out. But if I start thinking characters are dead when they're not, or I don't think a character is dead when they are, that's when things get really, really dicey, so... Yeah, I'm gonna have Sabin in the back row 24-7, spamming those aura bolts and whatever else he can do. And I don't have to worry about menu positions unlike a magic headgar, because... All of his stuff is in the blitz menu, and I don't have to worry about where it is, because it's all in one spot, all in one convenient little package. Sless and Setzer, they're both, they're both kind of characters that are hard to build wrong in a way. Like with the Illumina that I'll get eventually, uh, Sless, even the normal uh, worst choice possible, which is splitting vigor and magic. That's normally what I consider to be the worst thing ever. It's like. Why well, have two mediocre attacks when you could have one powerful attack and use it all the time? That's why, I, I mean, I was shooting myself in the foot when I was younger playing Pokemon, because I was like, oh my gosh, I need Thunder, Thunderbolt, and Thundershock all in the same Pokemon. That, that, that's great. So much offensive power, but it's like, no, that's stupid. <laughs> you can only use one at a time anyway. So, but because of the Illumina, I attack and magic spell proc at the same time. Uh, vigor and magic can go well together. Stamina doesn't hurt. I mean, I still don't really want any speed, but overall, I mean, I'm probably just gonna throw a mishmash of whatever I need to on her. And Setzer, most of his stuff is defensive except for the magic, which he can mostly just use for healing, so it's essentially just defensive as well. I uh, so uh, again, I, I'm not really too worried about what Setzer ends up with. I don't think there's any way his stats can conf can conflict or end up working with a. They're gonna be synergistic either way. So for Strago and Realm, I'm. What can I say? Uh, magic and a little bit of stamina, I guess. Maybe a little bit, bit of MP as well. They're. Uh, MP stats aren't too important because of Osmos. They're still somewhat useful, but uh, I can always determine when I run out of MP quite easily, and then from there it's just an Osmos thing, so shouldn't be too bad uh, having to worry about that. So, yeah, magic and a little bit of stamina to boost the defenses a tad. For uh, Mog, I'm gonna. I mean, a Berserk character is a Berserk, it's a character I can't possibly mess up with. Again, I'm going, same thing as uh, Edgar and a little bit Cyan. I'm going to go with the strat that's easiest because uh, that way things get a little bit less complicated. And I probably won't even be equipping the Moogle Charm because uh, I don't want to... The Berserk part is actually an asset for me right here because... Uh, I don't have to worry about an extra character's cursor positions or what they're doing or whether it's their turn, which uh, makes things a lot easier. So I'm gonna definitely be just having Mog go dance delicious all the way. And Gao, again, speed isn't all that useful when I can't do the menu tricks, so I'm gonna be giving him stamina till the cows come home and. He can make use of that through his attacks as well, so definitely not going to complain. I bet the only downside is that uh, I'll probably be using a lot less interesting Rage set because Brawl or Cephalid, things like that are probably going to take over quite a bit. Unless there's like a really, really perfect defensive Rage for something, he's probably not going to see much use of anything else from here on out. Anyone I forgot? No, I don't think so, because I went through them in order. Um, <laughs> except for Setzer, because I wanted to talk to him at, at the same time as Celeste. So, I think that's it for this part. Oh yeah, better talk about my Gogo -Go build. Gonna, gonna pump him full of, like, that Odin guy, because that, that's possible. 
and tomorrow I'll give him some uh, Typhon because that's a summon in Final Fantasy 7 so that counts good clear on that good as you can tell this is positively riveting four five and I suppose from that statement you can guess what I'm about to do in this segment and by about to do I mean hopefully about to do because it's late so I'm starting to act like an idiot and I'm not getting very good luck either although I still think my luck is still in average territory rather than horrible territory but oh, it's a chocobo it's better than the chest but Seek is available in this part of the game, right? I'm starting to second guess myself. Definitely isn't vanilla at least, but or is it another imp? The moment of truth will be in like 30 seconds I guess. Probably not that long, probably more like 15. I've been talking so long, it's probably 5 now. Yes, got it. Alright, there we go. Now let's get out of here. The good thing about my fails is that they at least cut down the length of the video I guess. That wasn't too bad. I find it funny how I never even planned out that route, I'm pretty sure, to begin with. That's not what I want. Nope, my ass in the airship. Okay, I'm now on the item menu. Okay. Close my eyes. By that I mean put pants on the computer. And save. Boy was I lazy there. Minisode number three now. Just gotta walk into town and then pretty much just walk out. <laughs> get led straight to the mayor's house thankfully so I don't have to walk all the way there that's pretty nice kinda of funny how Locke walks in lines up with Ben and then he's like no I don't wanna face you I'm just gonna take one step to the right and stare at the other guy while you're talking I just wanna weird Arvis out And eventually Tara will walk in and get a music change. 
In hindsight, I probably should have gotten the clock elixir when I was he here now, rather than grabbing the clock elixir in a whole separate mini soda earlier. But minor details, I guess. bunch end up hitting this uh, cliff face here and again I suppose I could walk pretty much any direction this town hit a cliff face so maybe that's not saying much right up across the bridge down the staircase this old guy here might be in my way I'm not sure where he is exactly I'm just gonna walk two steps up Take one step right and line myself up with the house. So now I know where I am in theory. So now I just gotta walk right and down for a while. It might be down and right, but I'm pretty sure I'll hit the house either way, so it won't make a difference. I'd just go and do the other thing I want to do in this segment, which is get Mog all in one shot, but uh, this town is full of NPCs which have set paths and get stuck on easily, so I'd prefer to enter at a specific moment. Just kind of guessing on the dimensions of that, and there we go. Straight out. Dang it. No, I usually physically reset before segments, but there's no battles in these ones, so there's no need to. That's why I keep forgetting my cursor position. Alright, one last part. Alright, I uh, don't think I've had enough practice for this bit, but whatever. Alright, so hopefully that's enough. Alright, just around this uh, little staircase area here. There we go, there's my door. Alright. So now I just walk right and down for a bit, and I'll end up in the cliff side. Timing it with the music there is just a tad finicky, but much better than having to deal with all the awful NPCs in that area, because a lot of them move on set patterns and have a tendency to trap you, so that's why they can be a pain. I'm sure I already mentioned this in an earlier video, probably the one where I took this exact same series of steps, but whatever. Alright, so now I gotta wait for Lone Wolf to get out of here. But I can menu trick this, because during this entire cutscene, even though I can move, he, the menu won't open. Alright, so now I'm out here, got a little, another little cutscene with him. Should be right about there. And I can menu trick this too. I mean, like most cutscenes in the game, but there we go. Alright, I think I need a little bit more walking up and left. Should be there now. Now I end up in that little notch I was in before. We've seen this bit before pretty much, so... 
this isn't going to be the most interesting mini segment of them all. Uh oh, I'm slightly worried that I only opened the door and didn't go in. Okay. It's just. And then took a step to the left. Okay, one step to the right. Walk up a bit. Alright. One, two. Yep, that's the shop. Straight out into these barrels that I know are here this time. Hooray for planning! And by planning, I mean watching where I messed up twice in an earlier episode. Because I didn't plan. Up one. I think it's five. After that, I just run straight out. There we go. Alright. One more to do. Uh blasted that player <coughs> the player two menu glitch thing. <coughs> like uh, with the sounds that pop up for players two's menu. Lone Wolf conversation number one. Again. Such a small detail <laughs> in the regular game. It's no wonder that no one bothered to catch that thing, but. It makes such a huge difference here when you set a character to be player 2's noise and they end up having player 1's noise. Probably didn't need to restart there anyway. Probably should have just kept going to be honest. Though it probably would have been irritating to get out of. Still think it might have been faster than doing it this way. Then again, there were no battles up to that point. And of course there never will be any battles up to that point, so. Alright. Wing it into the mines. I got a lot of leeway there. It's pretty much impossible to run too far. It would take some serious shenanigans to do that. Now I can just run up into this very conveniently placed corner here. Thank goodness I had to put a tutorial save point in the first area because this probably would have been more painful otherwise. Lots of long distances in this place. Lots of like up and lefting. As well as a lot of stupid little notches in the side of things to make sure that you're likely to get more lost. At least this area is nice, just right, down, left, up. If I'm even there, I suppose I probably should have gotten a battle there. Here we go. Alright, now uh, this should be either Sabin or Terra. Uh, I can't. Unfortunately, this team has very little synergy. I can't use their special moves to determine who's who because they're, they all have no uh, movement in the menu. So I, for Terra and Sabin, I can go to the magic menu easily enough to tell who them apart. And this is Sabin. And as for uh, 
Cyan and Setzer. I don't even need to tell them apart, because I can just do the same thing with each of them. Hooray for convenience. And now I can pretty much just press A a lot. Uh, in theory, it should be slightly better to use Cyan's attack than his uh, dispatch because there's a because of command delay. But in practice, it makes not much of a difference, and also uh, it's a pain in the butt in the butt to actually try to tell Cyan and Setzer apart. So that would be kind of a silly move to try and do that. I mean, not really that silly. I just have to get around where Setzer goes first, and then have Cyan switch, and then just keep mashing A like I'm doing now. I suppose I could technically do that, but... One, two, to get out of here. Left. And now I'm back in the area where I've got no battles to tell me where I am, but also no battles to step mine me, so that's kind of a double-edged sword. Right, down, right down. Lined up at the bridge. All the way left across the bridge. This whole trip up here is pretty annoying to memorize, really. Lots of little details. One up, one left. And even one, one step out of the way is likely to get me done in. Alright, there's a little room up here, but there's it's not long enough for there to be any guarantee of a battle, so... It's not gonna help me out any. This running segment isn't too long. Two down to get around this stupid little box here. Battle, please. Nope, no battle. So now I just gotta hope that I made it through there alright. Or maybe I didn't, and that's why I didn't get a battle. I don't know. Alright, a little notch here, but this time it actually helps me because it allows me to tell easily when I get into the next room. Which is kind of important, because that way I'm not right nupping into the next room, which would probably throw me off. And I can just do this bit. I run straight up. I hit a thing. This room isn't as bad to navigate as it looks, actually. One left. And now I just go right and up a bunch. I mean, up and right, because I did up first, but... I... I just have to do this for a long time, because most of the movements only go one direction. So I'm, unlike some places where I get a lot of mileage out of up and writing, I guess it's a verb now, uh, in this place, each step, each two steps is pretty much one step. So I gotta press the button for a long time. I'm probably gonna go way overkill as I usually do on the really long segments, but... I'm not going to complain about that. Just want to get this done and over with, really. So, hopefully, I've reached the top area by now. Now, let's go left and up a whole bunch. Now, if I've made it there correctly, I'll have to take one step right and then get out of here. And the nice thing is, the reverse direction of this area is pretty much the exact same in the opposite order. Well, in a mixed up order. All the way down right, all the way down left, and then take one step right and down. This area wasn't quite as long, so I think I'm probably over with it now. One step right, all the way up, and out of the screen. Gotta take one step down because they're a douche and set this up in a nasty way. Lone Wolf comes here, but I'm not gonna check just yet if I'm in the right place because I get a much clearer indicator just a little bit over there. Yep. 
That's good. Couldn't open the menu, so he's threatening to kill the Moogle. By the Moogle, I mean Mog. Why he's threatening to kill the Moogle, I don't even know. Like, <laughs> as of now, the Mog has no relation to my party at all. So it just seems kind of random. Maybe he's just banking on my party's uh, nicety towards little furry creatures. <laughs> Oh yeah, I have, I'd have to jam some dialogue at the end of this, right? There we go. Oh no, not those goggles. Goggles do nothing. And I have a Moogle. Hmm, I just realized, I gotta use the music when I get out of here. To judge when I leave the screen, which means I can't menu check at the end of this conversation because it uh, would get rid of the music prematurely. So I'm just gonna have to mash the button for a little bit of extra time. Glad I thought of that before I blindly menu tricked into it and then ended up in a complete mess after. Alright, this cutscene isn't too long after Lone Wolf falls off, so I'm probably good now. All the way down. And mirroring the right side of this, I gotta take one step back up. There's a lot of duality between the way up and the way down. It makes it a lot easier to memorize. And I just kinda fumble my way out of here. All right. Now I just gotta go right and down for a while. See, if I didn't know when I made it out of that room, and I had no plan to get out of that room besides to fumble my way down, then I would end up just some random place in the snowfield, and there would be pretty much no way of recovering out of that because the room after the snowfield is a bit of a nasty maze. So I need to know exactly where I am. There's no way I could accidentally stumble into the mine area. And there would be no way to get down to that room and know where I am at the same time, really. Which is why I absolutely needed to know where I was when I entered this one. Or it would have seriously come down to guesswork. Alright, so have I made it yet? Hopefully since I didn't get a battle on the way through that room the first time, I'll get a battle through it on this time around. Battles are kind of far apart in these areas though, so... Can't bank on it. For the most part, it's just kind of annoying that this segment exists at all, but it's kind of got to be there if I want milk in my party. With the dance learning, I guess I could do that on screen. I mean, it wouldn't make sense to do anything else because it's not really belt farming. I've shown all the other battles up to this point. Huh, well, I guess this segment's going to be even longer than it already is. But I want to keep up the, like, mirroring between uh, the LLG and this one. Alright, I think I've talked for long enough. I'm probably there. Right one, all the way down gotta make it to this random patch of rock. One, two, three. 
Gotta count that one out. It's, any other way, it's super irritating. And I got lucky to get a battle there. Just press the button at a moderate pace. Now, even though uh, Cyan's... I can't make use of Cyan's regular attacks in general, I can make use of them as counterattacks. In my test runs, they were triggering counterattacks at the wazoo and murdering themselves on his attacks, but it doesn't seem to be happening this time around. In theory, I should probably heal, but I'm too lazy, and Setzer will probably do it. Setzer, do, do all the work for me. Okay, thanks. Alright, hit the box. Round the box. Kinda gotta do a C shape around the box. And then, kind of a backwards L here. I guess that means. Well, L stands for loser, so a backwards L, I guess that means I'm not a loser? I don't know, only time will tell. I don't know if I'm going to make it out yet. Alright, hit the boiler. All the way down. This is the opposite of the first time I went through here, down, right and down, instead of up and left. Cross the bridge. Now here I was actually a little bit worried at first about memorizing this part, but then I realized that uh, every time I take a, have to take a jog back it alternates, so the first time it's one. Now I can enter this cave here. The second time it's two, the next time it's one, the next time it's two. I'd say etc, but there's nothing after that. Alright then, straight to this room. This area isn't quite as nice to go through as the first time, but... At least I'll probably get a battle to tell me where I am. Alright, two back. One, two. Yay, battle. Probably the last one going through here, unless I'm lucky. I say lucky because these guys are chumps and they'll just be giving me extra stuff, really. <coughs> unless I get unlucky, that is. I think this. Okay, never mind. I'm making things up. Yay, healing. Since there's a uh, Lego Morpher, my city and rabbit, or I think it's yeah, card game. Is it solitaire? No, no, no. That's seven flush. Go fish. Let's <laughs> just go fish. Cares like as much, almost as much HP as Terra has. Why I just kept mashing A there, I don't know. <laughs> Not like there's anything else to do after that battle. Alright, one. All the way to the left. Well, it turns out I did get another battle going out of this room. The relic setup this time around was just kind of random almost. Oh yeah, and Seven's got a black belt too, so I I've got two characters with counterattacks. For added extra counterattack fun. I think these guys can cast Vanish if I hit them with a physical attack, but they'd have to live the physical attack, so that's not much of a worry. Alright, now that should really be the last one. I don't, I'm not even sure if it's possible to get another one in that short a space with 
the really s uh, small number of random encounters in this area. All the way to the left. Alright. Right and down for a bit. This is the longest little jog left, I'm pretty sure. Not that I mean it's in the leftward direction. Well, I haven't gotten a battle. I guess it's a good sign that I'm not stuck in the last room before this. One. Two. Alright, so now I should be out of the mines. I hope. This is the last stretch, so I hope I don't mess this up. Again, coming down down the stairs is no harder than going up. Just gotta do a bunch of down lefts to line up with this. Then gotta do a bunch down rights, and then I'm pretty much home free. Probably more safety than I needed, but whatever. Left, and straight down and out of the town. And no NPC should even hit me on the way out. Nice, okay. Downright tedious segment, out of the way. See you next time. Alright then, last part of a segment that's already long enough. I'm not expecting to do this all in one shot. I haven't done that much practice of most of this and it's pretty long. I'm sure that's not what you want to hear after the fact that it's already been like half an hour already, but... I guess you saw the YouTube video length already, so it probably doesn't make a difference what I say here. Thankfully for me, I can at least save and quit at a lot of points here. I'll try to do it all in one mini-segment, but if I fail a part, it probably doesn't make a difference because I can, I'll just be reloading. back into this little corner here. Still remember this from before. And out of here. Alright, I select the bottom option by default, which isn't what I want. Alright, so, uh, I'm too lazy to go through the caverns again, so I'm just gonna hold left the whole time. Well, except when I'm in battle, because other holding left there isn't gonna do me much good. It's just going to make me switch rows like an idiot, and that's obviously not going to help very much. I equipped Taro with the Ice Brand instead of the Electric Sword, so she's damaging enemies at two times strength instead of healing them. But other than that, I haven't put much thought into this, so... Hope you like Mog's Mithril Pike anyway. <laughs> it's the only thing he has besides the Trident. Alright, I kinda gotta guess when the enemies are dead because. Well, that sucks. I kinda gotta guess when the enemies are dead, so that's when I hold left again. Yeah, I think they're dead. Nothing's happening. Thankfully, I've got a lot of leeway there that's unlikely I'll end up missing the whole. the lefting hold button thing. Ugh lefting, because you can turn that word into a verb. It's possible that I'll end up 
having a very uh, awful looking death through the serpent trench, but ooh, that's nasty for him, I guess. Overkill. But hopefully I won't die here. Doesn't matter, it's right at the start. So, and I don't have to do any na of that pesky navigation stuff until after, so. Holding A gets rid of all the boxes at the end of the battle, so I can pretty much do everything with the A button. Probably the end. That one wasn't very long. Probably just a double angle form battle. I probably won't save any time to go through the left path, but it'll make it even easier, so. Gotta love those counterattacks. Unless I'm just imagining things because, you know, I'm not really paying that much attention. that one. One more, I think? Well, I think there's semi-random. I think there's a couple in here that are semi-random, so I can't really predict how many more there are. So, I made it here. Alright, I believe I take one step left before I get on the staircase. Run all the way up. Alright, left and up a whole bunch. And by a whole bunch, I mean take me into a random notch in the next part of the town. So that'll be quite a few. Just don't want to go too overboard, because if I do go too overboard, the NPCs are more likely to get out of their starting zones and into my way. Which would obviously be a bad thing. This place is crammed, which is kind of why I want to go around the outside. Alright, that should be enough. Down to the bottom here. Now I go up and right for a while. Now, there are a couple places I could end up, but it's okay either way. I just hope... I mean, with so many NPCs, there is still a possibility of me just ending up somewhere way out of the blue, and... But I'm hoping I'll either end up right next to the weapon shop or the item shop. And I should only end up in the weapon shop if I have some bad luck here. Alright, I'm in a shop. One or the other. And now I can tell where I am by walking into the inn. Alright, so now I'm in the inn. If the inn was too far out of the way, I probably wouldn't bother. But, in fact, I'm already entering the inn as it is. So I'm sure not gonna throw away an opportunity to sleep in bed. Alright, it's down left for a while. So now I've reached that little spot in the wall. Oh right, there's a door there. Must have closed when I went to sleep.
didn't really think about that, but... Oh well, it's helpful, I'm not complaining. I'm not really praising it that much either, but... And now it's pretty much just a straight... Well, if you count walking down one step and then left one step straight and not drunk, it's a straight run out of here. Thankfully, there's that weird little spot between the building that allows me to get out of here. Config menu, because I always do that nowadays for some reason. It's all the rage. I'm getting more hip. Up and left. Alright, going left next. Forgot how annoying it is to remember after every battle whether I'm going up or left. Is this a back attack? I don't have my headphones on wrong again, so it must be. Probably could have remembered, figured that out sooner, but... To be honest though, all that does is slow me down here. Seeing as all my characters are in the front, I'm obviously not being that careful about safety. Speed first, safety second. So yeah, this is probably the hardest part of the segment. Then again, I'm breaking up so many pieces it's kind of hard to tell. Alright, there's being no battles, so... Down and right. Well, now there's a battle. Right is next. At first I thought it was a side attack now because uh, I heard a claw noise on the left right after I heard a claw noise on the right, but I was like, oh wait, Sabin's got claws too. It's practically a wannabe Wolverine. Or maybe a sa Wolverine's a wannabe Sabin. I don't know. Down right for a while. By a while, I mean like two seconds because battle. I should be pretty much close to the end there. Most of these are pretty short. There's no point in going straight in any direction in this area for the most part because it's also diagonally. Pretty much anything Sabin hits dies, <laughs> no question. <laughs> Alright, I'll finish my where I'm going here. Alright. Item save, skills, and I put Terra in Sabin slot because... Yeah, funny story that. In order to have uh, Terra be on the P1 controller noise, I have to switch her to the Play 2 controller noise and switch her places with Sabin. That was fun to figure out. Yeah, I figured I didn't need it that much, but always good to be careful. Especially since it's not like I'm going to run out of MP before that recovery spring in the Phantom Force. It's too bad I can't take the Chocobo like I would in a normal game. A lot of people seem to think that you have to go all the way around the entire Sabin scenario to get water rondo, but pretty much you just have to go through, through the serpent trench and then you ride the chocobo all the way back and then you just cross the belt. That's the fastest way to do it anyway. Uh, down, right, you don't even have to go through the phantom force that way, it's pretty sweet. Alright. So I end up 
going all the way right and bypassing that horrible little spot down there where they put a landmass that sticks out to the down and right just to mess with me. So after this is up, down, up, down, up. I think again going right next. If not, I'll be honest, I'd probably be running into the cliff face anyway. My characters were kind of slow in the ball there. Oh, come on, whoever that was. Right. So I've gone up once, now I'm going down once. Just gotta alternate through this for five repetitions. Three. Probably hit the cliff face already since I'm not getting an encounter by now. Alright, now I'm kind of starting to get worried I messed it up because I haven't had a battle in a bit. Four. Okay, this is a long one, so I definitely gotta get a battle here. I'm pressing the buttons quickly enough that I'm having trouble figuring out whether I'm going up or right here. But it shouldn't make a difference. Because there's enough water... Uh, the water is going straight enough here that I'll end up back on the same path. Pretty sure anyway. Maybe my mind is just messing with me, but... Then again, if it was doubling back on itself, I'd probably end up... ...not going up and right this entire time. Do that. So anyway, I learned the wind song from running across here. It would be pretty much impossible to get Water Rondo without learning Windsong. I mean, that's kind of a ridiculous statement because you could easily get it just by running away from enemies, but... Alright, I'm getting paranoid, and when I'm getting paranoid, that means it's a good time for a heal. Uh-oh, now I'm starting to think Terra just died. Well, if she did, that kind of sucks, because she couldn't have hold, held it for one more battle until I healed. Alright, so... Alright, seeing as there's no encounters, I'm probably at the top here. Two steps down. All the way to the right. This lines me up where I was in Sabin's scenario, I believe. Now all the way down.
Well, I'm walking a long distance, so that's a good sign at least. Even though the fact that Terra's dead is definitely not a good sign. Especially since I heard the deadly sham shear somewhere. Though I suppose Snowball would probably be more dangerous. Yeah, because I'm getting a lot of those incisors attacks. At least seven should be able to take out quite a bit with that Life Bell equip. It's not incredibly likely that seven will die unless if everybody else dies and he gets bad luck. Alright, so should reach the bottom here. <coughs> All the way left. I'm kind of going a little bit out of my way here, but... What can I say? It turns three or four steps into two, so... I love those counters. Don't really care because you're all at full HP. At this point, I'm suspecting that if Shamshir hit a non Sabin, they're probably going to die. Well, maybe not, because both, uh, Cyan and... Why did I almost just call him Kutan? <laughs> Mog have, uh, both attacked in the last couple seconds there, so unless a Caesar tick went off in the middle or something trolly like that, they're both still not dead. Alright. I'm kind of expecting to make it, to be honest, because the battles have been coming in all the places I've been expecting the battles, so... Here we go, Phantom Forest, but not yet, because saving. Uh... And I'll also get my Terra back. The only downs... The only real down... Well, I guess she doesn't lose that much EXP. Enemies in Sabin scenario give cruddy EXP to make sure that they all... All the parties meet up with not a ridiculous level cap, so... She's not missing out on much. Oh, right, I'm being an idiot. I forgot to take one step out of that spot before I went all the way to the right. Oh well, good thing I caught that anyway. And now, the battles take forever here because Terra's dead and... Not that she was my highest damage output by any means, and I'm missing, and they're slow, and all that good stuff. Hopefully the ghosts don't find a way to murder me or something before that recovery spring. I still don't know how well I'm doing. Alright, continue to the right. The only difference from Sabin's scenario here is that I don't walk into the recovery spring. One, two... Oh, come on. <laughs> I'm not irritated because I'm expecting to die, I'm irritated because I want to know where I am. <laughs> It's always nice to get those little uh, indicators because just like, yes, I didn't mess up. 
Well, I was already mashing the buttons to check if I was out of the battle, but apparently I'm not. Seven's Poison Claw heals things in this area, I think, but I... It doesn't make a difference because this Burning Claw just does twice as much damage, so... They're dead before they're healed. So now Terra's alive. Go, Terra! Around the water? Around the rock? Two steps left. Two steps down. And I can walk out of here. Yay, save points. Alright, so I gotta remember that mistake I made all those segments ago. Up and then right. More up and then battle. Hello, scrub enemies. I mean, you could throw snowballs at me, that's about as bad as it could get. Or I could miss with a couple t couple attacks as well. Then again, I think Stray Cats only have the chance to use Snowball if I'm farting around getting put to sleep a lot. I mean, I suppose Shamshir's bad too, but... Man, this must be a 5 rabbi encounter because this is taking a long time. I'm probably spending a lot of turns having Sabin murder something that's already half dead. Terra still hasn't had a single proc this entire time. Oh no wait, she did, yeah, in the Serpent Trench, but... Then again, she has been taking a dirt nap, so I can't expect as much proc procs out of a dead person. Unless they're a zombie, and if that's what you call as a dead person, but I suppose that would be more like an undead person. Or a re-dead person if you're playing Legend of Zelda. Which I'm not. Obviously. There's actually an Ocarina of Time, part of an Ocarina of Time blindfolded run for that matter. It's pretty cool, it uses a lot of the same style of stuff that I have to do here, but of course... Obviously not quite similar, because that's Ocarina of Time and a completely different game, but... The same type of thinking, essentially. Incidentally, that's the reason why I'm not bothering with some sort of, like, face cam or... Oh, gotta prove that I did it legit thing, because... Yeah, that guy had a... Bag over his head. I mean, maybe it was a pillowcase. And people were still like, oh my gosh, you could have had, like, mirrors everywhere and could have been, like, watching the reflection somehow. Even though it was obvious from what he was doing in the game that, that he was playing it blindfolded. There's no way he would go to that much effort to... Yeah, he pretty much back. One, two, three... Four, five, six, seven. Yeah, as I was saying, there's no way you'd go that through that much effort to figure out the strategies that you could use to play it blindfolded and then just not bother memorizing them. Eight, nine, ten. All the way down, 
I'm gonna save after every battle here, because you never know what I'm gonna run into. Some of the enemies can counter those physical attacks pretty hard. One, two, three, four, five, six. Thanks for coming after I was counting steps. It's much appreciated, really it is. I'll show my appreciation by killing you quickly. Normally villains say that line, but I guess I'm entitled to it here? <laughs> Maybe? I don't know. Instead of mashing A for a long time, maybe I could just use the menu trick like I normally do. I forgot to save. Whatever. Probably not gonna die in this battle. Actually, now that I just said I'm probably not gonna die, I probably am gonna die. Hello, gavelly gacks that are about to murder me, I bet. I'm starting to suspect these are more Phantom Forest enemies, as if I haven't had enough of those already. Then again, I suppose it was like three fights, so what am I complaining about? Finish going down. Almost there. Just gotta go a little short distance now. Oh yeah, I wasn't supposed to go up and left there. Another battle filled with stuff that I don't know out of the way. For my belt farming, I'm probably... In vanilla, I was able to, even though it was an LLG, I was able to use a strat that I was able to hold A. Oh man, I messed this up, didn't I? Well, okay, that wasn't the plan. I was supposed to enter the cave, figure out where I was, and then I walk back out and back to the airship, but that works too. Mess up and go straight into the airship. Config menu again. Alright, blindfold off, so that I can see where I'm going when I'm flying. Let's just keep it rolling, 31 minutes. I'm not playing this the same uh, as the last mini segment, so... So I definitely got Windsong tra traversing the overworld, and I definitely got Phantom Force going through the I mean, Forest Nocturne going through the Phantom Forest. And... <coughs> so the easiest one to get now is Desert Araya. Because it's right there. It's literally right there. there we go. Blindfold back on. Just gonna go back and forth so that I know exactly where I am. Theoretically, I could have also gotten Desert Araya anyway, if I had have gotten a battle on that, like, one step in the <laughs> desert that I passed. Well, it's good to hear that Mog survived that sandstorm. I suspect that... I take it Cyan probably didn't. Alright. But that's okay, I've got Grog in the airship. Grog? <laughs> Oops. You're messing with my head and attack. <laughs> and 
Okay. Cyan definitely didn't die. Oh yeah, I forgot. How did I forget the recovery spring and the fan force? Even Terra didn't die there. She gained a level at some point, which is nice. I clipped Esper's right. Yeah, I'd feel like an idiot if I didn't. I... Uh... <laughs> I'm not going to go out of my way to uh, get a whole bunch of extra extra levels, but I sure don't want to throw away the ones that are easy for me to have, so... There's no re real reason for me to check, I just wanted to stare at the four dances I got. <laughs> Alright. Time to clean up two more. Being an idiot, that's not where I'm supposed to go. Alright. Blindfold on. Before I land, because otherwise I might be cheating by knowing where I am. <laughs> I swear this is the item menu. Now I'm swearing it's not the item menu. Oh yeah, now I get it. There we go. Into the place. Hello, Mount Colts. It's been a while, and I definitely did not miss you. But thankfully this trip is pretty easy and snags me two dances at the same time. One thing that's kind of important to know, you can step left off this staircase, but you can't step right back onto it. <laughs> because... I don't know. I didn't get a battle going through there, which is strange, but... Let's just walk down and up. I think I got that battle in the down step, but it really doesn't even matter because I just gotta hold up and then walk back into the cave. There's enemies here that counter the fight command, but at this point, they're scrub level, so I don't have to care. I just realized I stole that scrub level phrase from my colluder who was playing this a while back. Whatever. If you're watching this, I'm ripping off your stuff. Alright. Normally I'd be kind of a little bit annoyed that you took out the encounters in the first room, but I'm getting Dusk Requiem going through here anyway. In fact, it seems like I'm actually going to have to go out of my way to get it. I suspect I'm one step left from the exit. Yep. My suspicions were correct. Back on the airship! For the last time, I believe, unless I messed up getting Earth Blues. Let's just double check. Oh, Terra died. Sucks to be you. Let's go drink some more beer, whatever it is in this version. It's a clean new world, so it might not be. I had my eyes o I should have had my eyes open to that text, so. Yeah, it just says drink. Orange juice, that's what it is. Thanks for the orange juice. I love orange juice. It's really, really tasty. Lift off. And now, finally, Love Sonata. In a place that is very much filled with love, Zozo. But before that, let's switch the Poison Claw into him. 
shove Mog and Terra in the back row so they won't be dying so easily. And double check that Cyan has learned life. Normally it wouldn't be important, but I needed to check whose menu is whose. So that I'm not telling Savin to incorrect Blitz input, or I'm, and I'm not telling Cyan to attack and to provoke vanish counters that will ruin everything. Man, 40 minutes. Don't even know why I checked that. Let's go. Should have put my cursor back on the save command, but, you know. That's not it. Yep, that's probably the item command. The absolute last, the first place I'm trying to avoid uh, triggering by accident because then I might waste an item or something, but. Of course, I mess up and go into that menu every single time. Of course, I just drank my orange juice, so. Just like that Eifert and Shive episode, it's all about the orange juice. You are a not important character. You are Cyan. You are not important. You are Sabin. So any Gax, Sabin should kill in one hit. Cyan should also kill it in one hit. The Gigas is a chump to dispatch in the front row. Out of my way, fat, so you're fat too. Counterattack, saving my time, and now I just have to press A on those. Anytime Cyan or Savin's turn comes up, I just need to press A at this point. The other two can sit there, as long as Mog doesn't die, because... And there's the last dance. Let's just save it. Blindfold off again, just to make absolutely sure that I got that love song in it. And yes, there we go, all the dances in my pocket. Wow, I can't believe I went 40 minutes on very little practice without messing up, but, you know, sometimes it happens. Mog and Terra have the exact same HP. Yeah, I'm starting to get antsy that I bought one of those. Just restart this just in case. No, I didn't. I'm just being paranoid. I'm good for that. Cecil188, you suck too. I know you're watching this. Don't think I don't know. Oh crud, I just bought the... <laughs> I gotta pay more attention. Oh, stupid. I was just mashing A there. More Opera House, yay! most enthusiastic yay you've ever heard. Don't deny it. And how did that happen? Happen there. Don't tell me that lady got my way. But I already made that joke on the bloopers, so I'm not gonna follow up on it here. Oh. Now I gotta go straight out the. Well, that's a good indication of where I am. Alright. Alright, so player two is either Terra or Sabin. And I have to check in the magic menu. This team has very little synergy. Uh, they all have a special move that doesn't make any noise. But thankfully Terra has Cure and Sabin does not, so... So this is Sabin, therefore. Alright, so... Sa Sa Science counterattacks. Ah, oh, what? 
I swear, I, t I tested this beforehand. Terra didn't have the messed up. Cried. I just told Terra to morph, didn't I? Ugh. 